Okay. Um, well, it's great to be here. Um, I'm really delighted to uh, have the opportunity to talk and show my work. So um, I hope you can all hear me. Um, if not, just shout. Um, yeah, so my name's Chris McHugh. Um, I'm a ceramic artist, but I have a background in archaeology. And I want to show today um, how um, my ceramic practice has, or I think it shares some aims of um, approaches to the contemporary past, archaeological approaches to the contemporary past. Um, in that it, it takes, um, it's a materializing practice and uh, it focuses on marginal aspects of um, person object interaction. Um, so I'm going to disc um, illustrate that with uh, two bodies of work which are on display uh, next door. So the first thing is um, during my PhD, um, I had a an AHRC international placement at the National Museum of Ethnology in Osaka in Japan. And I, I looked at the George Brown collection of uh, oceanic material culture, um, which had been at uh, Newcastle University and was sold to the Japanese museum in 1986, which was very controversial at the time. Um, so I was interested in how I could um, communicate something in ceramic of this complex and contested history of the collection. Um, the collection's been described as one of the most mobile museum collections in the world, and it's too complicated to discuss now, but you can see from this that it's, it's um, been in a lot of um, homes throughout the years and has exercised the endeavours of lots of people, um, particularly museum curators, etc. Um, so I was interested in how I could try to materialise and visualise this complex um, story in ceramics. So uh, a good example of one of the objects is, is this clock which um, George Brown used to show the, the size of people's earlobes when, on his, uh, when he was collecting stuff. Um, and this is a clock that I photographed in, uh, in situ in the museum. So I was interested in how um, objects in museums are um, or demand attention from people and in that way ex exert some kind of agency in doing so. Um, so th this kind of, uh, you know, you can see a quite interesting trajectory of, uh, of how the clock has uh, been it, sort of implicated in various photographs through time, um, including my own. Um, and this, uh, this photograph, uh, for example, is then kind of materialised in ceramic, and this is a piece I've got on display next door. Um, so it's really kind of trying to capture the sort of mi micro history of, of captivation with objects um, and show how much how they exert agency through demanding attention from people through time. There's also um, on the right there's a, a, some, there's a letter from a child to the museum saying don't sell the, the objects in the collection. So this, this was based on some work I did on, on the archive, which is still in Newcastle, uh, in one of the museums in Newcastle. The form was, was based um, loosely on, on these lime, lime containers which form part of the collection from the Solomon Islands. And I was interested in the vessel-like shape and also the surface decoration. Um, they, they seem to change a little bit after contact with uh, European colonialists. Um, and I was interested in that idea of how um, objects can uh, manifest um, you know, cultural shifts and, and cultural dynamics. Um, so that gave me the idea to create a, a series of works which um, kind of explored the idea of uh, the, the idea of creating a hybrid object, um, which says something about the history of the collection itself, but also that the uh, something about my experience of of the collection itself um, in, in its new home in Japan. So a lot of my work in, involves using uh, um, digital ceramic decals. So I take digital photographic information from usually taken with a mobile phone using Instagram, and. Uh, created a decal which is then fired onto the uh, surface of the porcelain. Um, so in that way it's kind of taking digital information and making it graspable, literally. Um, this is another piece which uh, takes some um, readings of radiation in Japan and uh, turns out into some kind of surface decoration. So it's a reference to the uh, ongoing Fukushima disaster in the north of Japan. 
The, uh, the other body of work um, <coughs> has been made since, um, well, during and since uh, an artist in residence program I did in Seto in Aichi, in uh, the central part of Japan. Um, that was something I did last year, and I became very interested in, in the uh, recent history of ceramics production at this site. And uh, in a period which isn't really seen as archaeological in Japan, it seems, it seems being too recent to be uh, worthy of study. Um, this is a, a pottery, a ruin of a pottery building near the studio where I was working, and it seemed to stand as a, a counter monument to progress. Um, but I, I became interested in the idea of exploring it as a site of, of uh, remembering rather than forgetting. Um, inside, you can see it's, it's largely, largely been taken over and overgrown. Um, there's a mug here which hasn't moved in a year because I've, I've, um, I've revisited the site recently and it's, it's still in the same position. Um, also around about there's some very interesting, quite idiosyncratic examples of uh, reuse of ceramic objects. Um, and I, I felt that at the time when I saw these, they might give our archaeologists an insight into, into the various ways material culture was used in the past. It might not have been functional. I could have, although I think these are some kind of slug repellent or something like that. But um, yeah. also, there in this site there were lots of um, abandoned moulds, plaster moulds, um, which uh, I would be. I became interested in the idea of, of reanimating through reuse moulds. Um, can act as a store of memory in that they instruct behaviour through their materiality and uh, they also tell um, tacit stories of, of uh, skill and labour. Um, so I was interested in how I could use my practice to raise awareness of, of that. Um, so this, this piece of, uh, on, on the uh, right is an incense burner which is on display next door um, and this is another work which I, is still in Japan in a collection um, which is more of a, like a shrine-like wall piece. Um, so during my time in Seto I became interested in how I could capture something of, of this site in flux um, through ceramics and so I made a series of works again using digital information and turning it into, into um, porcelain objects um, so these photographs all uh, are, well most of them are taken um, using Instagram in Seto so it's an attempt to record something of the, uh, material, the changing materiality of, of the place. Um, these works also uh, incorporate some reused ceramic items. So you can see in the top right these uh, flowers and, and dolls and things are, are pieces I've, I've um, recovered from sites in Seto from the surface. Um, I was told I couldn't dig. Um, well, I'm not an archaeologist, so I wouldn't try, but, um, but it was fine to take things from the surface. So. Um, yeah, so I think that suggests how how it, how uh, this period seen in in Japan in terms of archaeology. So I, these works, I, I hope, are exhibit a kind of ambiguous um, position somewhere between absence and presence. And I'm using these broken and scarred objects inside the pots, which, which are on display next door, to kind of uh, uh, you know to capture or to communicate a kind of sense of enduring loss. Um, So this is another piece um, that takes some inspiration from the, the poetry of Matsuo Basho and William Wordsworth. So they, they were both uh, interested in walking and experiencing places, but also in uh, ruination and the idea that human endeavor would be, or as was a threat of being wiped out. So the grass, which is made out of glass, is grown through the ceramics um, as a kind of reference to the idea of uh, nature surviving and, and surviving over culture. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the, uh, the title Seto Monogatari is a portmanteau which uh, takes Seto Mono, which is a Japanese term for pottery, traditional pottery, with Monogatari, which is a story. So it's, it's trying to tell the story of this, this, um, this site through time and space. So thanks a lot for listening. And, uh, yeah.